This is everything we expect at Apple's September 10th media event. What's up everyone, it is Andrew here from Apple Insider. And today we're gonna to talk about what to expect at Apple's forthcoming September media event. The invitations have gone out, the press is gonna be there, Apple is likely gonna be live streaming the event. So what can you expect to see at their 2019 media event? Well, let's break it down. We're gonna cover what to expect and the likelihood to expect it. First up, let's talk iPhones. So the new iPhones, they're going to be three models released in the same sizes and displays as last year, which means one LCD and two OLED displays. There'll be a successor to the iPhone XR, dubbed the iPhone 11, and reportedly two iPhones to replace the XS and XS Max, known as the iPhone 11 Pro and the 11 Pro Max. We also expect the iPhone XR replacement, the iPhone 11, to have two rear cameras this year, mimicking what we saw on the iPhone XS and XS Max. And the iPhone 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max will get three cameras, adding an ultra wide angle lens. So the new ultra wide angle lens, the standard wide angle lens we have now, and then the tele lens that we have now, allowing them to move seamlessly between all three of those lenses to capture more of an image and really make sure you get exactly what you're looking for in your shot. Most rumors have pinned 2020 as the year that Apple takes on 5G in the iPhone lineup. So that means 5G will not be in the cards for this year's 2019 iPhone line. Analyst Ming-Chi Kuo is also predicting that we're going to see a power sharing feature where you'll be able to wirelessly charge your AirPods or your Apple Watch by placing them on the back of your iPhone, similar to the power share feature we saw in recent Samsung phones. Bloomberg is also reporting a few of other new details, including the fact that we'll have updated Face ID that will work when it's flat down on a table, so it's flat down, it'll still be able to unlock using your face. We'll have a matte black color option, and the new phones will be more impact and water resistant than ever before. Of course, Bloomberg has been wrong in the past, so we'll have to wait and see if any of those rumors do come true. So that pretty much covers what we expect for an iPhone. Three new models, namely the iPhone 11, 11 Pro, and 11 Pro Max. More resistant, new color options, wireless power sharing, a bunch of really cool features. Let's go ahead and move on to our next subject, Apple Watch. Other than the iPhone, the Apple Watch is pretty much the only other device that we can comfortably say will likely debut during the September event. We have not really seen too many rumors this year, however, about what the new Apple Watch could look like or what updates could be. Sleep tracking has been rumored for some time as has improved battery life, though Apple has not included those features in the past few years. They could still be a number of years down the line until Apple feels comfortable with enough battery life to grant overnight sleep tracking. Until then, you're gonna have to rely on third-party apps. Otherwise, we're likely to see possible new case materials. Inside of recent watchOS updates, we have seen media files that represent a ceramic and a titanium back. So we could see new case materials either alongside or as replacements to the existing materials, which is aluminum and stainless steel. So what about on the Mac front? Well, for the first time in a while, we actually know that there is a new Mac on the way, at least one. And that's the updated Mac Pro and the Apple Pro Display XDR. Apple's already said these are coming by the end of the year, and we simply just don't know when. Apple could drop them with the iPhone and slew other announcements at the September event. They could also drop the Mac Pro with just a press release. Or there could be another event in October set to release the new Macs and other devices. We don't know. It is somewhat unlikely that we're gonna see it at this event. It doesn't seem to mesh well with the whole iPhone Apple Watch uh, setup. So we're not likely gonna see any new Macs here, but we are expecting a new Mac Pro, which is official, we just don't know when. And we're also expecting a new 16 inch MacBook Pro to replace the 15 inch MacBook Pro. Bigger screen, a few other features there. But again, we don't know when this is coming. It doesn't seem likely for the iPhone event, but it could be coming before the end of the year. As far as iPads go, we are expecting both a new entry level iPad as well as updated iPad Pros, but we don't expect these at the iPhone event either. Apple has historically done an October event where it debuts new iPads. Now we haven't heard much on the new iPads other than the fact that the Pros could be getting a triple camera lens system similar to the new iPhone 11 Pros, but it seems a little bit sketchy. I mean, it's a lot of camera power to put into a tablet. So we're not sure how much we believe that, but it is a possibility. Otherwise, we haven't heard much about the new Pro other than the fact that they are coming. 
We've seen plenty of evidence that they are coming down the line very shortly, and just probably not the iPhone event. Expect those sometime in October. So what other hardware does that leave? That leaves the possibility of an iPhone-centric Apple Pencil, something we've heard for a while, and at least one case manufacturer seems to have doubled down on that rumor, already producing a case for a smaller Apple Pencil that works with the iPhone, similar to the Galaxy Note lineup. We don't know, again, if we believe these rumors and we haven't really seen any physical evidence to support it, but it has been floated out there and it's a possibility that we may see. Other hardware includes the Apple TV. We haven't seen an Apple TV upgrade since 2017, and frankly, it's over time. But then again, the Apple TV hardware still seems just powerful enough. It works fine, it works great, it really supports everything that it needs to support, and it isn't lacking at all as far as specs go. So Apple could include another Apple TV update, but it doesn't really seem to need to. So Apple could hold off for a little bit longer. Apple has been putting a lot of time into the Apple TV with not only the new tvOS 13 update that is set to drop, as well as support for the new Apple TV Plus streaming service. All that's gonna be baked in. We're also seeing Apple TV software built into other set-top boxes and even AirPlay too. So Apple seems to be focusing less on their Apple TV hardware and more on the software side. So Apple has not forgotten about the TV and they seem to be doubling down on that arena, but we're not sure if we're likely gonna see a new set-top box anytime soon. We have heard rumors of a second generation of AirPods, a true AirPods 2, rather than just the minor spec bump that we saw this year with the wireless charging case. This should be a true second generation device, more of a pro device that adds a lot better features, more water resistance, some other cool functionality. But rumors have cooled in recent months, so it could be something that we see in 2020 rather than now in 2019. Lastly, we have one last piece of hardware that we could see, and that is a location tracking device uh, similar to Tile. Apple has seemingly been working on this. We've seen code again in iOS 13. So we see that Apple is working on it. We've seen some other rumors purporting this, but we haven't seen anything concrete in recent months. We haven't seen any actual devices leak or anything like that. So rumors are still a little bit scarce, but it makes sense that it would launch at an iPhone event. And since we've seen code in iOS 13, it could mean it's going to be seen this year rather than next year with iOS 14. So we'll have to see. It seems like a little bit of a long shot, but it definitely is a possibility. Aside from hardware, there's one other thing that we can expect from Apple's September event. And that is a whole lot of new software. Apple has been beta testing macOS Catalina, iOS 13 with iPad OS 13. We have updates for watchOS, tvOS 13, HomePods getting updates. Everything across the line from Apple is getting a new software update, much of which has been beta tested since their developer conference in the middle of the summer. So all of those are likely going to be released right after the event, possibly before the new hardware launches, which is what we usually see. The event happens a few days later, public release of the software, followed by the hardware releases after that, running the GM of that software. So we're likely seeing Apple following the same pattern again this year. So what do you guys think? Are you excited for Apple's upcoming September event? There's a lot of new stuff coming out, software, hardware, iPhones, Apple Watches, a lot of stuff to be excited about. So let us know down below in the comments what you think and what you are most excited to see and what your favorite long shot is. Are you hoping for a new Apple TV, a new Apple Pencil that works for the iPhone? Let us know all of your wild thoughts down below in the comments below or share them with me right on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. Hey everyone, did you guys like that video? Be sure to click on that like button so we can create content that we know that you guys wanna see. And follow Apple Insider on all social media channels. If you want the best prices on any Apple gear, check out the Apple Insider price guide that is updated daily. And until next time, we'll see you later.